Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to Losers Round 3 Casts for the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you the round 3 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. I seem to have gotten my introduction backwards. So, we saw yesterday round 2, and now it's going to go to round 3 because I said I'd do it today, so I will. Round three, first going to be Monkey versus Vermind, and then Chitin versus Sharadan, which is also going to be the first match ever cast in version 1.6.1.1, because that was actually taking a while to get done. So yeah, this tournament, mostly done with 1.6.0, but from after Monkey versus Vermind's game, it's in 1.6.1.1, which really doesn't have any big balance changes, but it's still a different version, so for what it's worth. Anyway, going to be starting on Snowblind. And that's what we're going to be starting. So let's start. I'm apparently become the president of the redund the redundancy department of redundancy, or department of redundancy department. I apologize. I'm slightly tired. Magugi going for Vekir, as is what ex as we'd expect. Vermine probably also going to go for actually. I think Vermine was Vekir, but we'll see what Vermine's up to. Anyway, Magugi probably the best Vekir player playing right now, and Vermind also playing Vekir, so apparently trying to challenge that title that I just gave Monkuki a month after the fact. Wait, whoever wins this game won this game quite some time ago, it's Shardun was busy. Anyway, Monkuki is, no sorry, Shardun wasn't busy, it was Haiku that was busy. Shardun was actually here quite frequently, but anyway, Vermind is not who we're looking at right now. Monkuki is sending out some scouts over to the southwest. Vermind also sending some scouts over to the northeast. And both players are going for fairly safe economic builds. Neither of them are, at this point, apparently going for rushes. It's a little too early to really tell, but... No, it's not. Never mind. It's not at all early. If it was a rush, one of these RPs would be on Q Plasma, and there'd be a foundation by where Vermind is, or when Vermind is, the one-minute mark. Vermind's scouts are meeting Monkuki's, and it looks like Monkuki's scouts are going to... Okay, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Monkuki Scouts did just win out there somewhat, but really the Tethviers died, and that's about it. Honestly, though, this stage in the game, scout battles like that are really not that big of a deal. What matters is what players are doing with their economies early on. Because those scout battles are going to be re microed over and over and over again just to try to get a slight advantage. But really, what matters is actually getting the scout in, knowing what your opponent is up to, and knowing what they're doing with their RPs. At this point, neither player has really advertised too much what they're doing, other than the fact that they are going for LC. So they are going for something suitably mid-gamey, if not late-game. But other than that, neither player has made it clear what is going on. Not even to me. So it's a minute into the game, both players are... Or no, sorry, it's two minutes into the game, but the players are still at the 120 mark or so. Just trying to get the most out of this whole scouting battle, trying to kill as much as they can at their opponent's units. Not a terrible idea, but still... So far, Monkuki is actually winning out, apparently. He's managed to get the upper hand, managed to get the positioning just right, and gotten rid of one of the Teth Veers. And the Shin Veers are going to go down to the Zion Veer once he gets to the base. So Monkuki is just going to be able to get rid of Vermind Scout pretty quickly, while Vermind is going to have a much harder time getting rid of Monkuki Scouts, but not that much harder of a time. There are going to be a slightly bigger thorn on his side, but... Zion Veer dominate ground. There's really no way around it. Zion Veer are the Veer class units that take ground and just make make it known that they are ground's king as far as infantry is concerned. As far as Vector infantry is concerned. As far as any other infantry is concerned, Zion Veer are okay. Marines are really the damage dealers, and Zion Veer just... They do have probably the most health of any non grecum infantry, but... Even with that. Sorry, not even the most health. Te Shinvir had the most health. But yeah, Zion V. Vekir is almost more about being able to survive longer than it is being able to deal a ton of damage, while CISO is the exact opposite. But in a Vekir mirror, Zion V is going to be the thing deciding what lives and what dies on the ground. Oh, thanks a lot, Shin and Teth Vir, for completely showing me that I was actually quite mistaken in that opinion I had of that Zion V are actually that much better. I guess Shin Vir's range advantage does actually make that big of a difference. Okay, I was completely mistaken. But two Zion Veer. Okay, Zion Veer do scale a lot better on ground. So that Shin Veer do have a much better range. That actually apparently counts for a lot. They have half the damage of Zion Veer, but twice the range. 
Well, that... That is very good to know. I'm apparently a bit of a fool when it comes to this. Really, infantry battles don't come up that often. I mean, in my defense, rarely do you see a lot of infantry being used, so it's... Usually when it's used, it's Grekham rushing with Octos and Vecker has to defend with some Zion Veer. But, yeah, I guess that's just the case, is that Shin Veer are actually able to outrange them, effectively. That's actually pretty good. I was actually... I was worried for a while that Zion Veer were just... Like I said, dominating the ground, overpowering it, and that was it. I'm quite glad to see that the range advantage actually counts for something. Between the infantry. There's actually some reason to not just go Mass Zion Veer. Granted, there's not really ever a reason to go Mass Zion Veer, except in the aforementioned Octo Defense, but... At any rate, it does mean that Shin Veer are not totally useless, as I as previously thought they were. So I'm, I feel better about that. I feel... Despite the fact that I was proven wrong in public, which actually isn't that bad of a thing. I'm still... I'm glad that it's the case that Shinveer are not, in fact, useless. Anyway, Monkuki getting a foundation, going to be getting a depot, and Vermine, this is at the 255 mark, a little bit earlier than usual, but not by much. About 30 seconds earlier than usual. While Vermine is also doing the same thing. Both flares... Actually, Vermine doesn't have a whole lot of Q-Plasma RPs right now. Monkuki does. Monkuki has a couple of them, and he's going to be able to... Oh, he's actually moving quite a bit over, that's why. Both of them have 7 RPs, but Vermine's opting to focus almost entirely on Liquid Crystal, while Monkuki is shifting a lot of them to Q-Plasma. So Monkuki looks to be going for a pretty aggressive conversion into slight later than earliest game attack. Probably a few... Okay, definitely a few Zion Pulses will be coming up. Some Zion Veer are being constructed to be thrown into the depot as soon as it comes up. And that's the depot, and Monkuki jumps away from it. Hard to tell what's going to happen. Vermon, on the other hand, at the 315 mark, his depot is being built. There it is. Whether or not any more Zion Veer coming up, I think this build here is Zion Veer. No, it is a resource processor. He has 8 RPs, as does Monkuki. Both players are quite even, but Monkuki is focusing much, much, much more on getting the resources necessary to build a lot of vehicles. And with this much Q Plasma, I'm thinking he's probably going to try to go for Skip Teleport as well. He has enough Q Plasma to get. Three Zion Veer, or three Zion Pulsers, and Skip Teleport and all of them. Getting Zion Turcher, actually, not Zion Veer, though he could still get... Sorry, Zion Pulser. So he still could... He could still get Skip Teleport in this thing. Whether or not he does so remains to be seen. And no Zion Pulsers coming up. Entirely going for Zion Turcher. I'm actually surprised I didn't think about this. Monkuki quite likes his Zion Turchers. I guess... There we go. Zion Pulser is just... You often see Zion Pulsar being built up, but actually in a Vecchio Mirror, Zion Turcher is a great idea, because Zion Turcher is the only ground unit that takes reduced damage from artillery. It used to be Zion Turcher in ATHC because the rule is cloaked units take less damage from artillery, but since Zion Pulsar and, Mar and Twin Mars can't hit air with their artillery attacks, the Blackbirds and Farapods don't really matter. I mean, admittedly, Farapods and Blackbirds on the ground are going to take a lot of damage, but most of the time they're in the air, so it's not really accounted for. Anyway, Zion Turchers do take reduced damage. They are getting skipped teleport. Vermin, on the other hand, at the exact same time, is... Actually, Vermin slightly later. is about a minute up from where Monkuki is. But he does have three Zion Pulsers. And moving in with Shinveer and Tethveer, not a bad idea, given that Shinve Shinveers are able to detect. So they will be able to see the Zion Turcher, because it is going to be cloaked. Doubtless it's going to be cloaked. The Zion Turchers on their own work best cloaked. The Zion Turchers with other units can tank for them, but on their own, there's no reason not to cloak them. Another Zion Veer being built up, possibly for another Zion Turcher, and in they go. They have not yet been cloaked, actually. Or, have... Nope, neither of them have been cloaked. Skipping into the base, and revealing that Zion Turchers are being used. Monkuki has shown his hand at about a minute up from the Unplayable Fast Edge, so Vermine does still have a bit of a chance to deal with this, and he is, in fact, going to do so. Jumping back to the 529 mark, looks like he's getting another foundation for detection, most likely. And... No auto defense being researched. I was wondering if he's going to do that, but it looks like he does have the resources for it, but he doesn't appear to be too concerned. Con just considering the foundation to be sufficient, that and for healing. But it is a detector, that is important to know. And the Zion Turchers have gone cloaked. Monkuki, there he goes. He is attacking in with Zion Turchers, and. No, they haven't gone. There we go, okay, they have cloaked. He was just. I was just a bit too far back. But yes, the. Like I said, the foundation will limit that. I mean, they are still able to snipe out the Zion Pulsar somewhat, but the Foundation is going to put a bit of a limitation on that. And there we go, the Zion Pulsar stops to attack, although admittedly, like I said, the reduced damage does count for something. 
However, even with the reduced damage, the Zion Pulses are still able to deal. It's about half reduced. It's, it's reduced down quite a lot. Like, normally, Zion Pulsers deal about 13 damage a shot. I think it's reduced down to about. Yeah, it's reduced down to about 2. So it's reduced down by a factor of nearly 5. Or not factor of about 5 to 7 or so. And. Actually, I should actually look that up. But. Anyway, yeah. Zion Pulses do not deal a whole lot of damage, but. They fire quickly enough that it almost doesn't matter if there's detection. But even then, I mean, look at the... Vermind is losing a lot of his army to the Zion Turchers. As much as the sniping is helping out, the Shinbeer especially is helping out. There's only so much that can be done. In fact, I think the Shinbeer is dealing more damage. Yeah, the Shinbeer is dealing more damage than the Zion Pulsar to the Zion Turchers. Like I said, a few more Zion Turchers wouldn't be a bad idea. Actually, Zion Pulsars are also a good idea, just for cost-effectiveness. But Monkuki has been... Getting fairly ahead in terms of economy. I mean, right now, Vermine's kind of been desperate. He's been building foundations and losing them. Getting rid of all the Zion Turchers, or at least scaring them away. Not killing them all, but definitely scaring them off. Vermine going to probably go around and harass the RPs from the back where there's no foundations. No, he is. He has been spotted, though. He's not actually able to do that. It looks like he's. Monkuki might have been trying to go around Vermine's base to deal with this, but he hasn't done so. Vermine, on the other hand, able to actually defend against this fairly well. The Shinveer in a good position to detect, and Zion Veer, sorry, Zion Pulsar, Zion Turcher moving back to base, Zion Pulsars are in the base for Zaman Cookie. Zion Turcher not yet jumping into the depot, Vermine from his point of view, he is at the 805 mark, about 10 seconds down, he is moving in, going in for an attack, going to try to counterattack, or at least, well, moving to the center so far, but probably going to go for a counterattack from here, building up another three Zion Pulsars, going in half a dozen Zion Pulsars against three Zion Pulsars, and a Zion Turcher, and a depot, and that depot is very important. I mean, he's got twice the number of units going in. Well, twice the number of Zion Pulsars. With the Zion Turcher, is going to be still a bit of a thorn in his side. Even with six Zion Pulsars, it's going to be... like I mentioned Meat Shield before, and this is where it's really going to come in. Because the Zion Turcher is going to take all the damage. While the Zion Pulsars, for Vermind, are being pounded by Monkuki Zion Pulsars. And the Zion Turcher has gotten uncloaked. It's run out of energy. It looks like Monkuki... Oh no, Monkuki voluntarily decloaked it in case it would run out of energy. But yeah, the fact that it... It's going to tank the damage, and it's going to take a lot of damage for it does, but no, he's moving in. He's going to harass instead. Monkuki going in for preemptive harassment. He does see the attack coming in before it comes in, and unfortunately ran into Zion Veer, and those Zion Veer do not have the damage reduction to worry about. Just the Zion Pulsars and Twin Mars, if they were in the game in this case, but they are not currently in this match. But Zion Pulsars most certainly are, and they are the only thing that Monkuki can be cavalier with. Everything else has got to be very careful make sure that he doesn't take too much damage. The Zion Turchers can tank damage, but they are not immortal by any means. I am very surprised though he hasn't jumped it into the depot. I mean, there's, there is room. It's only half full right now, building up more Zion Turchers and Zion Pulsers. And three Zion Turchers, four Zion Pulsers against six Zion Pulsers. The former army will win. I guarantee it. The Monkuki's army is going to win. The depot heal is icing on the cake. I mean, there is... Depot heal on its own is generally considered to be broken. And with this army composition, the only downside is Monkuki is not actually moving his units into position to deal with this yet. There he is. He has lost a couple of Zion Pulses. He needs to move the Zion Turcher up ahead. That needs to be the thing that is initially taking the damage of the Zion Pulses. There we go. Moving into position. That is allowing the Zion Pulses to deal with quite a lot of damage, but unfortunately not yet enough. Monkuki can't actually spot this. There he goes. Now he's positioning everything correctly, getting the Zion Turchers into position to deal with the Zion Pulses coming in. Unfortunately, they are not actually tanking. Regardless, Vermine's still losing all of his Zion Pulsers, or, well, two-thirds of his Zion Pulsers, but that's pretty much all of them at this point, because the rest of them are going to be wasting their shots on the Zion Turcher while taking damage, and even with Skip Teleport, Vermine's not able to really do too much. Unfortunately, for Monkuki, he has lost quite a few of his units. Not all of them by any stretch, but still quite a few of them. Vermine, on the other hand, is building a foundation for healing, but it's not going to last at all. A waste of 75 liquid crystal, though Vermind has some despair. Back at his base, no tech yet, no foundation, or foundations, yes, but no aerial control center or anything for future tech. It looks like he's riding on this battle, and a Zion Turcher finally comes in, but this is not going to be enough. The only upside is detection and spotting, and the thing is, even with that, the Zion Turcher is going around the back. Actually, Monkuki does not actually have any spotters for this. He has no Shin Beer, he has no foundations being built, but he could easily build a foundation to spot this. And he has the Zion Turchers to counter it. Because Zion Turchers, like I said, do not have damage reduction. Just Zion Pulsers. So I expect Monkuki will be building that up pretty soon. He's jumped back about a minute down from there. 
completely expecting this. Is he building? He's getting gay tech. Oh wow, he's getting. Well, actually, no, not. Oh wow, 11 minutes in the game. I'd be surprised if he didn't have gay tech at this point. And he's going for harassment of his own, skipping into Zion Pulsar to get rid of some of Vermine's foundations back in his base. No foundation being built yet for Monkuki in his own base, though. I'm a bit surprised. Vermine, back to the 1120 mark. Is he going to do anything to deal with this harassment? And no, he apparently is not. He's counter-harassing on his own, but he's not dealing with the harassment on his base. No units have been built. This is at Vermine's point of view, by the way. This is where all of his orders are actually going to be visible. A Zion Pulsar is being built, but both the foundations are being destroyed. Vermine can rebuild them. He can build about five foundations from here if he wants to use all of his money. And another foundation being built in the back, but that's not going to be as useful for detection. And speaking of detection, Monkuki getting a foundation up and able to get rid of the Zion Turcher. Unfortunately, the Zion Turcher able to get rid of a Zion Veer before it goes down itself, but still that Zion Turcher is no longer safe. Vermont unable to deal a huge amount of damage to Monkuki's infrastructure, especially since Monkuki does in fact have Gate Tech. At this point, he appears to be only using it for skip teleport, but I wouldn't be surprised if a Slipgate were forthcoming, and Monkuki is dealing with trying to deal with the depot as best he can. Two Zion Pulsers, two Zion Turchers. And also getting rid of the Zion Pulsar because why not? Might as well just get it out of the way in order to free up room to hit the depot. I mean, yes, it's get, there is, of course, depot heal, but even with depot heal, that does mean there's that one Zion Pulsar and that's it blocking the depot. If the Zion Pulsar is in the depot, it's not preventing the depot from being destroyed. Now, Vermind, he's actually slightly ahead of Monkuki, so we'll go back to Monkuki's point of view. Monkuki is at the 1253 mark, and. He is actually still getting attacked. He's built up a slipgate instead of a foundation, not able to finish off the Zion Turcher and exposing the fact that he has gate tech and is definitely going for chronoporting. So I expect he's going to teleport back these units and send them back to help themselves out to finish off this depot quickly. Another Zion Pulsar, another couple Zion Pulsars being built by Vermind. And looking back about 20 seconds, Vermind building more foundations as well. Possibly trying to deal as best he can with the incoming chronoportees. That will most likely be coming probably actually about the 12 minute mark or so. However, it doesn't look like Mongook is actually eager to teleport his units back to chronoport them into a self-assist position. In fact, he, he really should do that. I mean, he has two Zion Turchers here. They would help out a lot in dealing with this depot. If it jumps back about two minutes from here, two or three minutes from here, he'd actually be able to get rid of it. But it looks like instead he is teleporting back his Zion Pulsars. Or no, not teleporting them back, just building them in. Had to deal with the Zion Turcher and, of course, damage reduction. But now he's dealt with that, he's probably going to chronoport these guys back. Because he's lost his Zion Turchers. He can't save them other than by using a chronoport. And Vermind has set up quite a bit of a defense. Not the best defense, and certainly it's pretty easy for Monkuki to get tech set up from here. And I mean, Monkuki does have... There it goes, there's the chronoport. And teleporting in to assist. Another Zion Pulsar comes in to help out, and that will probably get rid of the depot, actually. If all three Zion Pulsars are chronoporting back. And they indeed are. All three of them chronoport back, and Monkuki does see all of their arrivals jump on the timeline. Vermine has not yet checked that out. He doesn't seem to be aware of the chronoport going on, but Monkuki certainly is, and checking what happens from that looks like that will probably be the game, I think. I mean Yeah, that extra Zion Pulsar is gonna be pretty huge. It's going to get rid of the foundations faster. It's going to get rid of the depot faster. It might even cause the Zion Pulsar that's defending it to die in advance. But no, it doesn't even look like it. It's too far north. It's just hitting the depot with impunity. And that depot's going down. That depot is down! Vermine has lost his depot in the unplayable pass of the 13 minute mark. Or 13 20 mark. And I think that's game. Vermine has no recovery for this. He has no gate tech of his own. He is checking out. He sees his depot is destroyed. He could... He's not going to be able to rebuild his base in the time it takes. Has built an aerial control center further in the future, but no gate tech of his own. No money for gate tech of his own. And I think this is... Well, I don't see any way that Vermind can get out of this. I don't even think this is a game. This is game. Vermind has lost this game. As you can see, it's not even up to the unplay unplayable past edge. Or just barely the unplayable past edge. And Vermind has lost all of his base but an aerial control center. He could maybe build foundations off of that. But that's about it. Are there Shinveer around the map? No, there are not. There's a Zionveer, but that's it. Only Zionveer, no Shinveer. That can't be right. Seriously, no Shin... Wow, that's that's unfortunate. Looks like... It looks like Vermind is going to be unable to completely rebuild at all. So that's game. Monk could get a little bit curious about his Corona Portis, though. Thinking that a third of them never arrived. I think... 
if he was planning on teleporting these guys back, he, I never saw him do so. But I did see the three... Or I think I saw the three... Oh no, he's right! There was only one Zion Pulsar arrival with three Zion Pulsar departures. That actually is pretty odd. I mean, regardless, it still worked, but... Yeah, that's... That is bizarre. Those those Zion Pulsar are just lost to the ether. They're, they're gone. Chronoport... It's chronoportation accident. We'll call it that. Kind of unfortunate for that, though. I mean, that was... I mean, didn't change the game ultimately, but still. Pain in the butt. That was just... That is bizarre. Okay, that's something to think about. But, what isn't anything to be at all curious about is that Monkuki has won the game, and that's not only a matter of curiosity, it's a matter of... It's an obvious fact. But yes, Monkuki wins game one, so we're gonna move on to game two in just a moment, and... That will be what we'll move on to in just a moment, so stay tuned! Welcome back, Gate Run fans, to game two of round three of the losers bracket of the 2013 Acorn Christmas tournament. We are Still on Monkey versus Vermine. That is the first match. The second game, the first game, Monkey won by Gate Tech. By Chronoport, even though two of his Zion pulses were lost to the ether. Lost to the mists of time in some other alternate dimension. They were lost in time and space. There we go. That's what it, that's the best way of putting it. So, yeah, I mean they would have come back next turn. I mean they would have been they would have had to wait a turn to be able to move again, but I mean the they would have at least been able to go anywhere on the map. But game did not last long enough for that to matter because Mon Cookie still won the game. I don't think anyone's going to get that reference. But anyway, on to game two, where hopefully the space-time continuum will be a little bit more stable. Though, being that this is a game entirely about bending it over and turning it into your personal pleasure slave, I would say that's unlikely. Hopefully, however, the game does not actually bug out, which is much more important. Let's begin! We're going to be on Overgrown Citadel this time round. So, Monkuki is on the west side of the map now, and Vermind is on the east side. I expect another Vekgear mirror, but we'll find out. Okay, it's a Vekgear mirror, because Monkuki is going Vekgear. And uh, Vermind's also going Vekgear, that's what we saw first, but Monkuki, I knew, was going to go Vekgear, because what else would he go? Oh, on a map like this, Vekgear mirror, actually, I... Hmm. Well, this is a very rush-oriented map, because it's so small. With Vekir, that would probably mean early depot rush, but on the other hand, Vekir doesn't rush well. I mean, especially since they have to get the first three RPs. When you had, when you could build two RPs, they could actually rush really well, or decently well, with one RP on QP, one on LC. I mean, it was an all-or-nothing rush, and that's one of the reasons why the even start was done. So I don't know how quick this game is going to be, in fact. Actually, it looks like Monkuki is not even going for vehicles at all. He's just going straight for infantry. Just massing a bunch of infantry, and that will... Well, that'll be... Apparently his opening strategy. From Vermine's point of view, at least. I mean, Monkuki has not yet started to build them from his own point of view. In fact, it would appear that from his own point of view, he's in fact cancelled this. He is seeing the scouts, but... Yeah, Monkuki has cancelled that infantry production. Vermind and Monkuki both are going for Liquid Crystal. They're apparently... Primarily focused on a mid to late game strategy. This is likely not to be a rush fest. On a map like this, a little bit surprising in recent time, though, I did mention yesterday that there was a game that was played in this thing, it was Grecum vs. CISO, that involved a chronoport of, I think, actually legal class units from the northwest down to the west side base. So this map can support large games, it's just. It's a bit of a knife fight regardless. It's really a matter of if you don't die to early rushes, then it moves on to a slightly longer game, and a slightly longer game, and a slightly longer game, but the players are fairly evenly matched. Although it looks like both players, regardless of even matching, are just deciding to go for later game strategies. None of them are going for Q-Plasma, yet both of them seem to be just going for a standard map strategy. I mean, Vermite has no real reason to, because he has lost the first game. Monkuki I'm a little bit more surprised at. Mind you, Monkuki doesn't seem like the type to rush too much, but still, I'm surprised he's not taking advantage of this map's size. But it looks like we are going to be in for a bit of a longer haul this time around. Monkuki has found Vermine's base, seeing that he is in fact going for more of an economic opening. 
not going for early Q Plasma. Well, actually, he doesn't know for sure. He doesn't see the North Q Plasma box, but he could probably assert that. At, if he sees four Liquid Crystal RPs from when he is there... Oh, no, he definitely knows. Monkey knows for sure what Vermine is up to, assuming Vermine doesn't change anything. Monkey is has that information at his disposal. On his own, though, he's... Well, he's definitely focused on his economy as well, so this is going to be a little while before anything super unique happens. Vermind looks to be building up a 7th RP. I think he's building a 7th RP on Liquid Crystal. Yeah, he's building all around. Trying to take all the available spots on those Liquid Crystal resource process or Liquid Crystal crates for the resource processors. That is... That is certainly atypical. But we'll see how it goes. I just... Okay, there we go. There's a foundation for a depot. The two-minute mark... Monkey has built a foundation, probably for a depot, but no Q Plasma RPs yet. He could teleport some of these onto Q Plasma, and he probably will. But not quite yet. The depot is going to come up, or the foundation's up. Whether the depot will come up soon after is yet to be seen. And he's. Sorry, this is Vermine, not. No, this is Monkey. Sorry, it's confusing because Monkey was player two last time, and Vermine was player one, so I. Yeah. In general, please, when you're playing these games, try to keep the same player slot. It makes life a lot easier for me. Actually, it just makes life a lot easier in general. It's a lot easier to track what's going on. But anyway, Vermind... I was right, though. Monkuki is the one that was setting up a depot there. Vermind also setting up a, a foundation. Not quite a depot. Monkuki was setting up a foundation. But it looks like he has undone that. Either that or hasn't quite come up at this point. No, it looks, that looks odd. Vermind has a foundation set up. And he does have a Q Plasma RP being built. He's not going for a 6, Q, 6 LC RP as I had thought. He is 5 LC, 1 QP. And there's that opening depot. I expect Zion Pulsars will be coming up fairly soon. Monkuki, on the other hand. There is Foundation. There is a Q Plasma RP. His 7th RP, not his 6th, at the 242 mark. Still faster than typical. Typical is going to be like 6 and 2 to 6 and 4 before getting the depot. Or possibly 8 and 4 even. But... This is still fairly... I mean, the depot would be come up, coming up at the 330 mark. The 240 mark is earlier than usual, but later than I'd expect on this map. Vermind at the 206 mark has not yet gotten the resources to be able to build vehicles out of the depot. He's jumped back, probably built one at the 238 mark where my cursor is right now. While Monkuki, on the other hand, has his depot up at the 330 mark. It's going to be up at the 330 mark, not just started then. And that is going to allow him to build some vehicles. That's kind of the point. He actually has 48 Liquid Crystal right now. I think... Is he going to be waiting for Zion Turcher? Yes, he is, actually. Or at least he very well could be. It's hard to tell whether... Oh, Vermin jumping back, actually. Jumps back and... Shinveer, apparently... Either in the way of the depot or... In the way of the depot. That's about it. Monkuki, unfortunately, leaving... When he undid his scouting, he left the Shinveer in the way of the depot. Moving it out, but I don't know if that's going to be in time. I think the depot... Okay, the depot is getting built. He had to rebuild that. He had to resend that order, so the depot was built later than he would have liked. But it is still going to be built in a decent amount of time. And Vermont, on the other hand, has his own depot up. And that was actually a successful raid. Like, I mean, he slowed down the depot enough that it's on par. Actually, later than his. Vermont has the early depot. He could, in fact, start building at. He could build a couple of Zion Pulses, right? Or a Zion Pulser. But still, that's. No, he could build two. He has enough Q Plasma to build two. Enough Liquid Crystal for sure. Whether or not he'll do so remains to be seen. I think he might go for skip. No, he's he is going for it. That's two Zion Pulsers coming in. He has a bit of an advantage. I don't know if he's going to attack straight away with that Zion Pulser. I mean, he could. Well, he sort of could. Not really. This Zion Veer is probably going to jump into the depot to become... Or this Zion Veer is going to jump into the depot in order to become a Zion Turcher. Nope, never mind. The first one will. A Zion Veer. Doesn't really matter which one. What matters is that the Zion Turcher is up. The Zion Pulser has not attacked in this very short window that it had. And the Zion Turcher is getting skip teleports, so Monkey is preparing to go for a bit of a raid. While Vermind is setting up Zion Pulsers. Probably going to try once again to overwhelm the Zion Turchers with Zion Pulsers, which is not actually infeasible at this stage of the game. It's something he could do. But it's something that Monkey is going to very quickly be able to prevent with enough Zion Turchers and enough Zion Pulsers. Two Zion Turchers up. This is going to be much harder to deal with, but still, it's feasible for... Well, for the amount of Zion Pulsers Vermine is building, four to six Zion Pulsers should be able to deal with two Zion Turchers without too much issue. Now, if they were supported with Zion Pulsers, then it'd be a completely different story. But of course, that's also more money. So Vermind is 
in a decent spot, but both players are not are just massing up, they're building up, they are not going straight for an attack. And Monkey builds up a com hub for vision just to know if anything's coming in. I am glad to see that. You don't see enough com hubs being built. You really don't. They're very handy, they're, they're great. I mean, they give you a ton of vision. I mean, if you built one, actually a better place would have been to build one right here. Or build one over, I think, I'm not 100% sure, I have to double check, but I think that this area here at the top is actually flat enough that you'd be able to build, I think, let's see. No, it's not flat enough, sorry. You can't move a com hub up there. But you could have a com hub near it. Or actually, you could, uh, no, you could have a com hub near it, but I don't think you can actually land. Unless this area. Nope. There's no flat area there to land a com hub. However, there is still area to put a com hub near your opponent's base, and it would be able to see in no problem. The Monkuki has nice vision. He has a. Th That's the second Zion Turcher. The first Zion Turcher has been raiding for a little bit. It is getting rid of the Shinveer detecting it. No foundations have been built yet. Vermind is actually paying attention at this point in time, so we would see foundations being built up. And a second Zion Turcher in place to start harassing quite hard. Vermind has this foundation going. Okay, now he's changed it up, but the foundation is not close enough to deal with the weakened Zion Turcher to finish it off. And it is itself going down. And it looks like infantry coming in. Auto hierarchy mistake there, unfortunately. That is actually one of the changes, I believe, to 1611 was to make auto hierarchy not automatic. But, that might have been a mistake. I mean, Monkey might just take advantage of this, set up some foundations, and use that for healing. He almost might as well at this point. I mean, he has the money for it, he might as well just set up a couple foundations in his opponent's base. And use that for healing. It looks like Vermind is deciding just to go for a counterattack, and it's going to be a powerful counterattack too, no defenses in place. Mind you, these both have skipped teleport, so getting back to base is not a problem. And in fact, is exactly what's happening. Zion Turcher is in place to defend. Both Zion Turches actually, unfortunately the infantry were moved to what might be their deaths, the Shinveer couldn't, no it can't escape, Monkuki cannot order to escape in time, but Monkuki can however get everything else back here to get rid of the Zion Pulses before they're too much of a threat. That being said, Vermind is moving forward, he, from this point in time at the 732 mark, is moving into attack and is dealing a decent amount of damage, he might have the 7 minute mark to deal that damage that much sooner, but he cannot get rid of the Zion Turchers, they're going to be a thorn in his side and with the spotting of the comm hub, those Zion Pulsers have basically no chance. And even... No, that Shinveer's down. But the Zion Turchers are able to defend just fine. There's no detection. There's no way in. I mean, the thing is, last time we saw Vermine had home base advantage when Monkey was attacking. I mean, he just did two right now. But... On the offensive with the Zion Pulsers, that's not going to help. And actually, Vermind in the last game brought Shinveer along with the Zion Pulsers, which helped a ton. I mean, that actually kept him in that battle for longer than would have otherwise. However, granted, that wasn't that long. It still wasn't very long. Zion Turchers counter Zion Pulsers. And at this point, Vermind is just switching to Zion Turchers, not even bothering with Zion Pulsers. I mean, Shin Turchers really would deal with Zion Turchers, no problem. But, of course, he doesn't have air units right now. Actually, Vermind has... Wow, 6 RPs compared to Monkuki's 10. Monkuki's gone 6 and 4, Vermine's gone 6 and 0. Oh. No Q Plasma income for Vermine whatsoever. I don't know what he expects to accomplish with this other than maybe dealing some damage. I mean, he's he is set up to go for a Zion Pulsar, Zion Turcher mix, which would help with the Zion Turchers. I mean, it's more just a general powerful thing to do, but... I don't think he's, he's not going for that. He's not moving the Zion Turchers, sorry, Zion Pulsers in. His Zion Turchers are being moved to the north. But he's not following up with the Zion Pulsers. Apparently he's probably too concerned about being attacked, keeping the Zion Pulsers at home instead. Monkuki, about 9 minute mark, is validating that fear, actually. 920 mark, he is coming in with the Zion Turchers, and the Zion Pulsers are trying to help, but really can't do too much. It's rather sad, unfortunately. I mean, the Zion Turchers are now in place with the 852 mark. Looks like... Vermind actually didn't quite get his Zion Pulsers, sorry, Zion Turchers out before Monkuki's came in, but unfortunately one of them is unable to deal a whole lot of damage before it gets hit. They were on move, not on attack move, and thus did not stop to deal with the Zion Turchers. One of the Zion Turchers does go down, however, for Monkuki, but three are still remaining, and there is no detection and no real counters either. Vermind in the 930 mark, getting up Shinveer. Desperately trying to get counters for this. Getting more Zion Pulsers as well, but like I said, Zion Pulsers are countered by Zion Turchers. I don't know if... I think Vermin's aware of the damage reduction. He's, he's got to be aware of it. But that is the thing to keep in mind. Zion Turchers are a hard counter to Zion Pulsers. 
Okay, unless you have a huge number of Zion Pulses, but you basically have to have two or three times as many Zion Pulses as Zion Turchers. And it does not scale well, but it looks like a Zion Turcher coming in from behind to help save the day, keeping Vermine in this game. Keeping the Zion Turchers from dealing too much damage, because once again, no detection being provided with the forces, despite the ubiquity of Zion Turchers in this game so far. But even with that, it looks like Monkey, from his point of view, he does have a Zion Turcher that's dealing some damage. He does have more Zion Turchers coming in. And he hasn't actually teleported the Zion Turcher back. Doesn't really matter, though. Actually, it looks like... Did splash damage do this thing in? Yes, it did! The Zion Turcher actually defeated itself! Did Vermine... No, Vermine has not actually dealt with that. He didn't move it away. He could. He has a bit of a chance to do so, but... No, he doesn't. Never mind. He, he does not have a chance to do so, but regardless, he defended his base, saved the day. However, that was... Oh my goodness, that was kind of amusing. The Zion Turcher destroyed itself with his own splash damage, negating its cloak advantage. Boy, that must be painful for Vermine. However, Vermine's still in this game. He's not out yet. He can, although admittedly his economy is very weak. And... Doesn't have Aryans, so he can't easily get Shin Turchers. While Monkuki has plenty of cash, he's getting a Slipgate. He has Gate Tech already. He's getting Halcyon Class as well. No Aryans, though. Neither player going for error, but still. Slipgate being built up. Chronoporting going to happen fairly soon. And Vermind is... Sort of prepared. He has Shinveer. He has some Zion Veer as well, just to get around the damage reduction. Not a good bad idea. The Zion Pulsars are also in place, which are going to be fairly useless. And Zion Turchers coming up, which are actually going to be a worthwhile asset. Mon Cookie, however, has been building up economy to the north. Keeping that in check is going to be a bit of a problem for Vermine. Mon Cookie actually going into the present, moving all of his RPs over when it's going to be a problem. Very nice. Very nicely done. Prepping the RP move is extremely useful. Not done enough. I know I don't do it enough whenever I play, but something that should be kept in mind, because you can pretty much predict when your RP is going to run out. In fact, the timeline does show it, though Monkuki is doing this in advance of the timeline showing. You don't see any orange in his timeline. Or... No, sorry. Purple in the timeline designates that. You see a bit for Vermine. He has actually... He lost this box, but you don't see any purple in Monkuki's timeline in the resources section, so he is not... He's doing this well in advance. Nice prediction, and that is going to save him a lot of chrono energy in the future, and it's going to be like three minutes from now. That's going to be huge. And right now, however, the 12.30 mark, I say three minutes in real time, like achronally. Anyway, the 12.30 mark, three minutes down from the present, Zion Turcher attack and Zion Turcher defense. Vermine has the Zion Turcher in place with Depot and Foundation to heal up, and Detector is enough to actually deal with this, but... Even then, it's not great. Foundation in place, Zion Veer in place, sorry, Shin Veer in place, but even the Shin Veer is taking a, actually not taking that much of a beating. And Mongui decides to retreat. Able to deal a bit of damage to the economy, but not a whole lot, and that's that's actually pretty good. Vermine's keeping himself alive at this point. Mongui, however, he does have the Slipgate up. He has Zion Halcyons being built. He can chrono board those back, get them in at the nine minute or 10 minute mark, doesn't look like he's necessarily planning on doing so. He might be actually doing that exactly with these Shin Turchers, these Zion Turchers. And I would actually recommend getting Shin Turchers to do this with, but... This is looking like the Chronoport group. And that's definitely going to be affordable. He's just waiting for it to actually be feasible for Chrono Energy. And it looks like that may not be. He's jumping forward to the future. They're closer to the future, but it's not actually going to make a difference. He knows what he has. He was close enough to the unplayable past edge to know that Vermine did not kill those Zion Turchers, but Vermine is trying to expand now. Getting a bit of a sa more stable economy, but still well behind. And straight teleport, not even a Chronoport first. Straight teleport with a Zion Halcyon and Zion Turchers. That Zion Halcyon is the big one. I mean, that's... Well, okay, it's about the same damage as a Zion Pulsar, but much stronger. And without the damage reduction against Zion Turchers. So that is basically going to be... Pretty much game at this point. Or close to it. Not quite. There's no detector. That's the, that's the thing. I, like I said, Shin Turchers would be very useful right about now. However, because of that, the Zion Halcyon goes down. Monkuki losing. Jumping back to double check if he can save the Zion Halcyon. Might just teleport it back. He has the Chrono Energy with which to do so. Hard to say if he's going to do that. And no, he's not. I'm surprised he did not do that. That Zion Halcyon was. As expensive as... T well, okay, he's got more Zion Halcyons coming up. 
But uh, Zion Halsons are expensive. I mean, 168.72 compared to 68.15 for the Zion Pulsar and 108.45 for the Turcher. That's like three Zion Pulsars right there. And it's definitely as tough as three Zion Pulsars. Now we have three Zion Halcyons. They appear to be preparing to Chronoport. Now this is going to be where it becomes devastating. Now let's see. Vermind. Bit of economy to the north. Successful defense so far, but that's only on this iteration. Next iteration. Actually, not even next iteration. These aren't even Chronoported. They're still teleported. No time shenanigans quite yet. Monkuki is going for straight damage with the Zion Halcyons. Not even bothering with Chronoport, even though he could afford it and would probably benefit from doing it. He is just simply teleporting. And that's, I guess, all he really needs to do. I mean, he has an economic advantage. He's had a massive economic advantage this entire game. The north side is his. The southwest is becoming his. Actually, this is when he teleported, mentioned before, three minutes ago, when he teleported all of his RPs to the southwest. And now we see that it's happening once again. The order is restored, and he doesn't have to waste Chrono Energy on it now in order to take care of that. He can instead use it to teleport and chronoport these Zion Halcyons. Or throw them in the depot. And then possibly chronoport them. Come on, we want to see chronoporting. Chronoport doesn't make this game cool. But Monkuki apparently not quite so interested in entertaining an audience. Or maybe he is. Let's see. It's it's very much possible. He could actually be going... Nope. Straight teleport once again. Not going for the chronoport. Going for the straight teleport. Attacking the base pretty effectively too. And just microing around. It looks like there is going to be... Oh, I see. Interesting, Monkuki pointing out that Zion Turchers, while cloaked, can be killed by the Halcyon Splash. That is a good point. Very good to note. The problem is just when there's a bunch of Zion Turchers on their own or separated from the rest of the units. I, I mean, that's kind of hard to do when Akron units tend to clump up, but if the Zion Turchers are there and they are cloaked and they are alone. Zion Halcyons have nothing to target near them in order to deal the damage. You can't attack a point of ground. So, not a bad thing to point out that yes, you could just... Sorry to say, Cybernetic Pony's pointing out in chat that this is the case. And yeah, that's a good thing to point out, but it's just... Right now, that's important. Other parts of the game, when there were Zion Turchers over to the north like this, then it didn't matter so much. But yeah, definitely near the building, just hitting them is going to work wonders. I am... I guess Monkuki is really just depending on essentially fighting. And looks like he's actually low on power. Yeah, Monkuki has used up a lot of power. He needs to build another foundation. Not that it makes a huge difference. I mean, he's not recharging skip teleport, but he's, he's actively losing energy. And another foundation being built. Once that's done, power will be back to normal. Power has been restored. So Monkuki, once again, has power. His energy was mostly drained, but Zion Halcyons only need energy for their Nanite Infection. And Nanite... Or sorry, Calm Jam. Calm Jam... Nanite Infections for Shin Halcyons, which is also banned in the tournament, by the way. But Calm Jam, not banned. Not the most useful, not the most useless. I don't expect that to happen, though. Vermind is kind of depending on numbers more than he is depending on micromanagement. If Vermind was attacking, then Calm Jam would actually be fairly useful on defense, especially since there are no Teth Churchers to recover with. That would actually, that would be suicide. I mean, wouldn't be able to teleport back the units at all. But it looks like Monkuki is setting himself up once again for another mass teleport. Well, we'll see. He's not going into pause, so I expect teleport and not chronoport. There it is. The teleport happens, and Zion Alcyon's in play. The Zion Turchers are out of energy. Vermind does not have them cloaked. He could, but we are looking further in the future than where Vermind is. And the Zion Halcyons are able to just take care of everything in... Vermind's base, and I think Vermind, to my bad his point in time, he's probably going to cloak the Zion Turchers, but as Monkuki pointed out, that will not do him much good. What else is he building? More Zion, Tur more Zion Pulses, but no tech. He has auto defense, and that's about it. No Bastions being built. Granted, they're not going to last very long if they were, but still, nothing really in place to prevent this. And another depot being built over to the south. Interesting. Maybe another Annex as well. Another, a second base on Overgrown Citadel of all maps, building a second base like that. That is unusual. But Monkuki can get away with it. He has so much money in the bank. In fact, he should get away with it. In fact, not he should get away with it, but he should do it. it should be, he's just not got enough space on his first depot to actually build units with. He just gets an annex. If he gets an annex next to this one, he can get even more vehicles from here. And getting the power upgrade as well, which I don't see very often by Vecchier players, but on a map like this with how few foundations can easily be built, <laughs> I'm not surprised. That's where the power upgrade comes in handy. And now Monkuki is going to be good for power for the rest of the game. And I think the game 
is not going to have much of a rest of it. This is about it. Monkey is, however, not actually able to hit the Zion... Like I said, Zion Turchers, when nothing's next to them, aren't hit by Splash. Granted, this one Zion Turcher is going to take a lot of damage thanks to that Splash, but still... Ah, nothing matters though. The Zion Turchers have... They oh, that one uncloaked, that's for sure. Yeah, that one is... Yep, it uncloaked. Right now, it is not cloaked. Vermind has... The second one, however, is cloaked and still will be cloaked for another minute or so. But that first one, draining his energy way too fast. Actually, yeah, let's say about, about a minute or so. It doesn't really matter, actually, how long it takes because that that Turcher's going to die regardless before these Halcyons, all these Halcyons are gone. There's so many in the base that Monkuki has. Monkuki has this depot over to the south. I don't even know if he's... He's not even focusing on this depot to the south. He's just continuing to build with the depot in his main base. But he's not focusing on getting an annex here and building even more vehicles. Which is actually surprising to me. But yeah, that's... This is basically it, and surprisingly, no air units. In neither game, air units were used. Both of them were 20 minute plus games, and... Only one of them an aerial control center even built. And none of them have had air units used, which is... Surprising to me. Especially given that air units were predominant before, but... Even still, that's just surprising, I guess. For Vecchio especially with it. Shin okay, there we go. Now we have a Chronoport, but especially with the Shin, the Shin Turcher, Teth Turcher mix, that is unusual. But this game has been a lot of unusual things. You never see power actually be relevant. You never see this many vehicles in play at once. You don't see air not happening for that long. Chronoporting is the only normal thing that's happened in this game. Halcyon being used as a mainline unit is unusual, though. Really should happen more often. And that's game. GG. For Vermine, he throws in the towel, and Monkuki takes the prize, basically. He is in... He continues to remain... Well, not the prize yet. Obviously, he has to continue winning and winning and winning. But he does move on to losers round four, and the winner of Kitan versus Shardown will be playing against him. So congratulations, Monkuki, and we'll be moving on to that in just a couple minutes. So stay tuned.